Okay, so as you guys will see, I just took this thing down in pretty much seconds. Still hit pretty hard. I was kind of shocked. Should get a lot of coins after they're baited. Alright, so... Alright, so beat the sadist. Uh, beat the who was was after the sadist? God, I, it, it was so quick that I forgot. Oh yeah, the giant thing, then Joseph, and then some sadistic RPG piece of shit. <sighs> A little salty on that one. And then this guy, so he was the fifth boss. So I think about the six. At least I think about the six. That kind of lost count. Search for your daughter. I made it sound so dramatic. All right. Oh, cool. Finally got this to the next. Took a while. I imagine this also has a new game plus once we done once we're done with this quick playthrough. This was so short. Is there any health kits? Because I kind of really need some. Okay, is this the last diary? What do you mean? So I'm fine myself? I mean, that's kind of what the file was supposed to be. Oh, Joseph. in here. Okay, so that's the guy who's the sadistic. So what's in here? Gives a shit. That's an important plot device, but let's say explore the side story. Okay, the RPG guy, but he's dead now. So what was this? Oh, so you're the You look like a scrummy bitch. Anyway. this. 
Interesting. Oh no, my daughter is about to die. I think we're towards the end. Okay, so yeah, I, I figure it's not showing him, but that's the picture of the daughter and uh, dad, I, I guess. I think it was pretty obvious. Okay. Uh, I mean, we gotta try this out. It's gonna be hard, isn't it? Go through. Nope, I guess not. Go. Ah, shit, the big guy. Ah. Okay, cool. Up there on my shoe. Damn it. I broke his neck.
out. We're not doing that shit. Headshot. Well, hammer shot. Please tell me it's the last one. Cool. Rocket launcher? Rocket launcher. Of course we're using a rocket launcher. Alright, save. I think this is the final boss fight. And break it my leg, I mean my neck. That's so brutal. Every time. That is a lot of blood. So what that means is the daughter's possessed. So what's that mean? Is the daughter the bad guy or Oh wow. You're your own worst enemy. Who would have ever guessed? I will save you, my generic daughter. Yeah, this is clearly the final boss fight. Wow, this was short. Who knew that the Keeper would be his own worst enemy? Except for anybody. Wow, so kill myself. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, Mobius. So I gotta fight the keeper again, huh? Even though I'm the keeper. There are so many spikes. <sighs> Shit. Seems like a trap. Shit. Take it we can't play this over a, a deck of cards. Alright. Uh, 
Oh wow, you are fast. <laughs> Bring it. I want my daughter back. Okay, rocket launcher. I, I'm done with this. Oh, jeez. Ah, ah. Dick? Okay, fine. Still badass. Yeah, killing the Dark Keeper essentially kills yourself, right? Oh. What? That's horseshit. So. Oh, wow. This sucks. So it regenerates once more, huh? This sucks ass. One, but it regenerate. It's not even fair. How's that even remotely fair? So you have to kill it once, and then it regenerates, and then you kill it for real. That's cheap and dumb. That's really dumb. Okay, let's go kill this Dark Keeper son of a bitch again. Alright, so don't grab the help kit because I'm gonna need it for the second time I have to fight this generic boss. And I only have one rocket launcher. Better not waste it. Come on, bro. Come at me, bro. Looks like you've been pawned. Oh no, I'm dying. Because I'm having a battle within. Alright, let me grab the health kit because I'm gonna need it. Oh wow, you survived! How shocking! You know what? Rocket launcher! Damn it!
<sighs> and crushing this one more time so I can finish this. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Because I don't want to do fight this thing again. Oh no, you're... Dude. What? Do I have to fight this again? What the shit? And lower hands. Are you fucking good at it? Yep. Three phases? Really? Three. What the hell is that? <sighs> That's bullshit. No, that that What the fuck is that? That that's a dumb idea. Three phases? <sighs> that just takes time and that's annoying. Is there at least another health gate? Oh, there she is. Seriously, is there another health kit? That would help so much. It's horseshit. to the back too. Kill you again. There. So we gotta do this three times. We can't just end it. After twice, crush it one more. And now he has to lower hands. That's stupid bullshit right there. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Okay, dude, come on, let's just get this over with so I can... I guess I could throw it in the same spot. Such 
bullshit. Oh no, I'm about to die for my daughter. And that sucks too, because I, you, you had to avoid the hands. So not only do I have to fight lower hands, then I gotta fight that. Oh my gosh, this is such a ball. I'm just trying to find this asshole. Shit! Can I just grab a health kit at least? Come on, dude. This is just so unfair. Seriously, Dark Keeper, where are you? Finally! <sighs> let's end this. Please, let's end this. ahead. Ah, oh, we're done with this. DLC. Merry Christmas, you asshole. Bye, -bye. Bye Keeper. I know you're gonna be back in the sequel. Well, the saddest endings. Oh, okay. Peaceful music. Alright, so my verdict of the executioner. Yeah, I gotta give it a. Uh, hmm. Hmm. It was still entertaining, but I got so many flaws with this one. I'm gonna have to give it a 5, unfortunately. It was just busy work. It's like busy work until we get to the sequel. Okay, what did I dislike? The final boss fight was bullshit. 
Okay, to go in more details, the final boss fight was cheap. You can die easily to it because there's three phases. I've seen three phase boss fights, and Dark Souls and some other games do great three phase boss fights. Especially the boss fight was entertaining. That last boss fight was cheap. It, it, it's cheap and busy work just to get to the end. You're exhausted at a point, you're just like, please, can we just get this over with? Because after you crush it two times, you're expected to be over, but then you have to do that three times, and then fight it again. You hit it once, then fight it again, and it's just, it's busy work, and it's not fun. It, it's, it's tedious. It's repetitive. You don't feel any personal investment, because the daughter diaries only give you the backstory, but you don't feel invested. So yeah. The, the final boss fight was just cheap. The other ones were just repetitive too. They're nothing to write home about. In fact, they were all cheap too. But the final boss fight just really rubs you the wrong way. I, I don't like it. I, I really didn't like it. Other thing, game is just really short. It could have just been a free DLC. I don't think they should have charged that. It's just shorter than now. Mind you, the assignment and the consequence were short too, but done well short. It, it felt like there was a lot of content, and it, they lasted a while. It just felt like you got more content for those short DLC. And even with the main campaign, you get a lot of content into it too, so... This one is cut. This one was definitely the weakest. There's just... You'll be done with it in less than two hours if you're really good at this, this game. Another thing, even though the story between father and daughter is sweet and it gets a great payoff, I guess, it gets a great payoff, but you don't get invested. Not like Kidman's story. Kidman's story is the best storyline of the Evil Within just one. It's the best storyline. This one's the weakest. It's worse than the main campaign. It, and I, I think I read online that this is not, this is non-canon, so it doesn't matter. But the, the story between the father and the daughter, is just weak. It, it, you don't get invested. You don't really care about the, the executioner or I guess the keeper. You don't care about the keeper, except for the main campaign because he's a tour de force or he's a. He is someone to not tangle with, and he's great in the main campaign. It's just his own DLC kind of sucked, story-wise. I didn't enjoy the story. I, it was just kind of like one boss battle after another. There's tokens, you level up, but there's nothing special about it. Who cares? And as much as you want to be invested in the daughter and the relationship with the father, it's just not done well. It's just diary explanations. There's no voice acting. There's no great backstory. There's no anticipation of what to expect. No, it's just, it's not fun. Okay, so. And there's no, there's no incentive to, there's no replayability. Once you're done with this, now you just move on to Evil Within 2. Uh, I felt more inclined to play Kitman's storyline and the main campaign, but not this one. I, I'm just not invested in the Ikit Executioner. I'm, I'm not. Okay, so what do I like? What I like is the insanity of the brutal violence. Say what you will, but the brutal violence is more brutal than maybe the main campaign and the assignment or Kidman storyline. It, it just felt like the developer just said, let's just throw logic out the window and just do it. I'm glad they do it. I I'm glad that they just basically said, let's just have a ridiculous one. Yeah.
yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of glad that they went with it and just kind of didn't care about how ridiculous it is with uh, the RPG status or the keeper or the brutal kills like that. The brutal kills were just fun. Every time you did it, it was appropriately fitting for the evil with that, but for the keeper, yeah, I love playing that as him. The brutal kills and the gore and everything that was gore enough and when they went over the top of the gore, I loved every moment of that. Even if we saw the same execution for the exe or the keeper all the time, it was always fun. Every zombie I killed, I always wanted to do it. And every zombie I threw, I loved throwing it. And every zombie I like decapitate, it was so fun. Every single time. And the gameplay. Fight as the keeper is super gratifying. You feel that power. He was appropriately powerful and he wasn't over yeah, he was appropriately powerful and he was OP in the right places. Gameplay wise, it was fun to play him. Compared to the other ones in first person, it just made sense. Playing as him as a first person worked so well. Those are the only two complaints I have. I I, I had to give it a five. It's it's just not great. Of a DLC by itself, I would I I would ask for my money back. But as a whole, it's not really necessary. You, you could have skipped it, but I had to play all the content, so we got a grand scheme of everything. Okay, so now that I played the main campaign and all the DLC, my final verdict of Evil Within One is still gonna be a seven. In terms of what I like, or actually, well, let's say what I hate, it's going to be the Executioner. The Executioner is the weakest link, and it's just the padding, it's padding until we get to the sequel, and it's not even worth the money. You can skip it. Just focus on Kitman and main campaign, and you're done. That's just the main canon stuff. This one is just a side story to understand the, a great villain, but wasted a good... It, it was a good feeling it's wasted in DLC. That's all we gotta say. It was better when we didn't know his backstory. If that makes sense. The main story campaign is bad too. I was like, you understand it a little bit better, but after you play Kitman's storyline. But that doesn't excuse the main campaign not being great. It's it just, it's horrible. It's not great. There's not replayability for the story. The, the main story, in terms of Sebastian's story, not great. Ending is a great cliffhanger to go to the next sequel. Great cliffhanger, great beginning, but everything else was just... In, it was unnecessary or just bloated. Like, they, didn't, they had a great plot, they didn't know what to do with it. They didn't know what the hell to do with it. So, we can't... Yeah, that just sucked too. Another thing I hope they fix in the sequel, the save to checkpoint system for all three campaigns was frustrating because they're so far apart. You have to replay it, let's just say, case in point, Dark Keeper. There's three phases. If you die even on one of the phases, you gotta start from the very beginning. I think that's bullshit. I think you should start in the middle or where you got the furthest and then continue. Dark Souls. They get away with it because it's fun to find all three phases. It's a test of endurance and turn termination. And the fact that it's fun to do that because it's a challenge. That's what they are meant to do, and that's what they they nail. This one, it's just frustrating for the sake of being frustrated. That's stupid. Even in the DLC and the main campaign, it's just the checkpoint system has a mind of its own. It doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense that we have to start 10 minutes or the entire boss fight from the beginning. I think that's horseshit. It frustrates me to this day. Hope they fix it in the sequel, or at least make it better. They don't have to fix everything about that, but they gotta fix the checkpoint system. That was just baloney. That, that, that was ridiculous. And I guess if I had to say another complaint... Yeah, it was... A few of Kitman's stealth section. I, I mean, as much as I like Kitman, I think hers is the best storyline, the best content of everything in this thing. But the 
the four stealth section. That frustrated me too, and as you saw in my Kibbit storyline, the four stealth section bogs down the experience. And you really notice that in the first half compared to the second half. I can't get behind the stealth section, but it's done well more in the first campaign, and it doesn't need to be in the Executioner. But the main campaign, it's great. I like it. It gives you choice. Can't man, that was the weakest link. But maybe they'll fix it. But I think it's great, and it was balanced in the main campaign. I will give the main campaign that. I think that's pretty much it. But the good thing about this entire package, in terms of the evil within in general. One thing I like, Kit Mid Storyline. Whatever happened in Kit Mid Storyline, the entire beginning to the end of her entire story. Perfect start, perfect ending. Loved the DLC. Loved every single thing about the DLC for Kitman. When it was Kitman, it was great. It makes you want to replay the main campaign, and it's it adds to the main campaign. That's what a DLC should do. And for even if it was short, it was really good short. It was like cherry on the top. I really hope Evil Within 2 takes example for Kitman storyline. The assignment consequence are perfect. The assignment is the cherry on the top. It's the best one out of everything. And then we put the consequence and then Sebastian's main campaign. And then the, well, yeah, the executioner. But when it was her storyline, DLC is perfect. The gameplay is perfect fantastic with the, all three DLCs, but it's the best in Sebastian. In terms of main campaign, I have fun with it. The leveling system is fantastic in the main campaign. And even if we don't get any of that, the gameplay is still fantastic for all three DLC. I love each gameplay. They're all unique and all done well. Plus, the visual design and the atmosphere for each one is very flawless. It's eye strikingly good. And it really shines in more of Sebastian's campaign and definitely Kidman's style. Focusing on those visual designs, it's very good. Monster designs are very well done too when you go back to the main campaign or Kidman because they actually did some creative stuff with the monster designs. Regular zombies are terrifying, appropriately terrifying. You get used to them. But appropriately terrifying. The boss creatures, even though they're frustrating and they're the double edged sword of bullshit, just starting from the beginning, but they're well designed and they're t appropriately terrifying. Very terrifying. Stuff of horrors, but they're very all unique. Even the keeper that we're looking at right now, too. Yeah, and I guess that's, that's it. Now to move on to Evil Within 2. Hope they approve on what I think was frustrating about this, but overall, good first start for the first game of this franchise. Okay, 